I used to be a firm believer of the notion that there are never any bad products, just bad prices. However, AMD have managed to shake me off from this belief and, ironically, they've done a pretty good job at that. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Last week, reviews for the anticipated Radeon RX 6500 XT went up online, and this GPU has sent waves amongst the GPU community, but definitely not in a good way. The general consensus for the GPU across many tech reviewers and media outlets has been pretty negative, and rightfully so. Now before we get into why this card has been so poorly received, let's just back it up a bit and see what AMD is offering with the RX 6500 XT. They announced this GPU this year at CES 2022 at an MSRP for just $199, which is what made it so highly anticipated. Users in that mainstream or budget segment, that $150 to $200 price point, have been just begging Nvidia or AMD to release a card at this price bracket, and that will finally be a worthy upgrade from their RX 570, GTX 1050 Ti, RX 480, etc. And that's what's important to remember here, as these are cards which were released anywhere from 5 or 6 years ago at this point, so they're long overdue for an upgrade. But for $199, what are you getting here? Well, the RX 6500 XT has 16 compute units, a boost clock of 2610 MHz, which is a pretty high figure compared to the other 6000 series GPUs. It's only got 4GB of GDDR6, which for a card being released in 2022 that's targeted towards gamers should be unacceptable. It doesn't matter if it's a 1080p card, this thing is going to have a really small lifespan. And it's just a shame, back in 2016 we had 8GB models of the 470 sell for cheaper than this. To make matters worse, this GPU has its PCIe bandwidth capped at just X4, which impacts its performance when used with a motherboard that only supports PCIe 3.0, which the vast majority of gamers in this segment will probably be using. Along with that, it's got no hardware encoding capabilities, so you can't even use staple features like Relive or GPU accelerated recording software. Again, it sucks because users in this segment would have to rely on their GPU to record their gameplay, as they're probably using a slow or lower core count CPU that isn't going to do well with CPU encoding, at least not without significantly hurting their performance there. I had a buddy of mine who used to stream on Twitch on a rig with a GTX 960 and an i5-4690K, and it was mainly because Shadowplay worked so efficiently on that 960 that they were able to do so while not significantly hurting their performance, even though their CPU was just a quad-core. Oh, and that GPU came out in 2015, by the way, for like $200 or something close to that. Almost all the AIB models of the 6500 XT have two ports consisting of an HDMI and display port, so a max of just two monitors can run from this thing. It also lacks AV1 decoding, a video codec that has been widely adopted at this point, so it's not even a great choice for people who might want to use this in a home theater PC application. So we haven't even touched on the benchmarks that have been posted by reviewers, and already this thing looks like a dumpster fire. Over at the Pharonix forums, where a lot of discussion surrounding Linux happens, John Bridgman, who is AMD's technical staff member responsible for Linux drivers, mentions that Navi24 was primarily meant to be served as a GPU for laptops, but they decided to to release a desktop variant as well. After all this, I'm wishing they hadn't even bothered at this point. Now as for the benchmarks, I'm sure most of you guys have already seen the disappointing performance that this GPU has to offer, where it actually loses to older generation cards like the 5500 XT, RX 590, RX 580, cards which were released anywhere from 2-6 to six years ago, and that's quite embarrassing. When it comes to performance using PCIe 3.0, there's further performance degradation as pointed out in Gamer's Nexus review of the card, which is really important to keep in mind because again, do you really think the majority of gamers in this segment of the market are going to be using the latest PCIe 4.0 motherboards? Probably not. Ray tracing performance is basically a meme, so I won't even bother with that. So you have a GPU that has had half of its features stripped away, its performance is awful, and it loses to GPUs that came out like a half a decade ago, and you can't use it for streaming, it's overpriced. I'd say the outrage and the negativity surrounding the card is justified. You know, I've seen some arguments made that reviewers have been wrong about calling this GPU bad because it's a card that has finally been released for $200 in this crazy GPU market, and well, we should all be grateful because that's what gamers have wanted, and it couldn't even be more ludicrous than that. 
First of all, the card, like the rest of the GPUs released in this clusterfuck of a GPU market, is selling anywhere from $50 to $100 above MSRP, and that's at retailers, not even talking about scalpers, so it's really not as cheap as it's been implied. Two, gamers weren't just asking for a $200 card. They were asking for a $200 GPU that could finally be a worthy upgrade for buyers who want to remain in this segment as they have been six years ago. Guys who are finally looking to retire their old 580s. Not a fucking downgrade at the same price many years later. That's what I have a problem with. Imagine if someone purchased an entry-level GPU back in 2012 and then upgraded to an RX 470 for roughly about the same price in 2016, so 4 years later, but ended up getting the same, if not worse, performance. It would have been outrageous. I purchased an HD 7770 back in mid-2012, and upgraded to a 270X over a year later, then got an R9 390 as I upgraded my monitor and my plans changed, but if I had decided to just keep this HD 7070 and ride it out for about 4 years, and uh, then gotten an RX 470 4 years later, I would have gotten over double the performance for roughly the same price 4 years later. Keep in mind the HD 7770 launched with an MSRP of 159 USD, and the RX 470 launched with an MSRP of 179 so we're talking about a $20 difference there. However, now that's not the case anymore. The 6500 XT loses to cards in the same price bracket from 5 or 6 years ago. It's a joke. For anyone with a RX 580, a substantial jump for them would have to be something like an RX 6600 XT. However, for them to attain that, they'd be looking at paying $600 plus. The whole world has been turned upside down. Inflation is at its highest. There is still a semiconductor shortage ongoing. I get it. That still doesn't justify the business decisions AMD has made for this GPU. All they had to do was bump the card's memory to 8GB, not cap its bandwidth to X4, and give it proper hardware video encoding capabilities. And they would have ended up with a decent, or I'd say an acceptable option, at $200 in this current market. What's also extremely comical was that AMD had posted a blog post on their community forums back in 2020 explaining how 4GB is not enough for today's games. Yet they release a GPU in 2021 with just 4 gigabytes, but then they actually had to hide the post because, you know, they would have been laughed at after the release of the 6500 XT. But it wasn't until Kid Guru had noticed this and called them out for their bullshit, where they had to put it back up, claiming it was due to some other server outage or some other nonsense. All in all, the 6500 XT is an absolute joke of a graphics card, it's an abomination, it deserves every bit of hate it's gotten, and nobody should buy it. That's my take on AMD's attempt at trying to appease the budget gaming market. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.